O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense. The lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And together we will say, O oh, gracious light, O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. We now say Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept the record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than the watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. The first reading is from the book of Matthew. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffer, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I, must, I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done, just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. Second reading is from the book of Genesis. 
When the news reached Pharaoh's palace that Joseph's brothers had come, Pharaoh and all his officials were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, do this, load your animals and return to the land of Canaan, and bring your father and your family back to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you can enjoy the fat of the land. You are also directed to tell them, do this, take some carts from Egypt for your children and your wives, and get your father and come. Never mind about your belongings, because the best of all Egypt will be yours. So the sons of Israel did this. Joseph gave them carts as Pharaoh had commanded, and he also gave them provisions for their journey. To each of them he gave new clothing, but to Benjamin he gave 300 shekels of silver and five sets of clothes. And this is what he sent to his father. Ten donkeys loaded with the best things of Egypt and ten female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and other provisions for his journey. Then he sent his brothers away, and as they were leaving, he said to them, Don't quarrel on the way. So they went up out of Egypt and came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. They told him, Joseph is still alive. In fact, he is ruler of all Egypt. Jacob was stunned. He did not believe them. But when they told him everything, Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the carts Joseph had sent to carry him back, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. And Israel said, I'm convinced. My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. This evening, we are looking at an encounter that took place some 2,000 years ago between Jesus and a Roman soldier. Matthew and Luke both recorded this event in their Gospels, but there are differences. Luke records that the centurion first sent a delegation to plead his case before Jesus. Matthew records that the centurion came to Jesus himself. Another case of how the same event is remembered by two different people. The basic facts remain the same, just that some of the minor details are different. We don't get to know the name of the Roman soldier, just that he is a centurion, that is the commander of 100 soldiers. The centurion says to Jesus, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. This is coming from a commanding officer, a member of the occupying army that controls Israel. How and why did he come to Jesus asking for the healing of his servant? That we are not told. Perhaps a member of his household was a follower of Christ and persuaded his boss to make a request of Jesus. Perhaps the centurion was a seeker, searching for a God to believe in, despite having been compelled to acknowledge Caesar as a God and to pay allegiance to the Roman gods. We do not know how he came to faith in Jesus. All we are sure of is that he had a sure and certain faith in Christ. We also are not told why the life of the slave was so important to him that he willingly humbled himself before Jesus. But the centurion did believe that Jesus held the power of life over death, and that he could heal from a distance with just a word. 
the centurion was willing to gamble his life and reputation by dealing with Jesus. He was willing to risk it all for a healing for a much-loved slave. The centurion certainly had a faith far greater than a grain of mustard seed. He believed that Jesus had the power to heal and that by asking in faith, Jesus would heal his slave. Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. Do we approach Jesus with enough faith that he would grant our requests? We have a lot to learn from a Roman centurion of long ago. Will Jesus say to us, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. Together we will say, Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray for the church. We pray for Gregory, our Archbishop, and for the parish of Hope Loop Church Milo. We pray for Bishop Faneuil, our sponsored student Naomi, and the Diocese of Northern Malawi as they struggle with the COVID virus, praying also for Scott and Jenny Ramsey, Ramsey, missionaries in India. This week in our companion diocese of the Windward Islands, we pray for St. Paul of Galiaqua with St. John Dallaire and Reverend Ashton Francis. <clears throat> in our own diocese, we pray for St. Andrew Calgary and Reverend Christine Conkin. In our prayers, we remember Ethan, Howard, Joe, Graham, Linda, Krista, Heather, Rose, B, Tim, Stephanie, Marion, Phyllis, Vince, Natasha, Jerry, Barbara, Michael, Chris and Diane, Mary Lou, John, Irene, and the Wall family. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for all who confess the name of Christ. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for those whose lives are bound in mutual love and for those who live in celibacy. Be their joy and their strength. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all in danger, for those who are far from home, prisoners, exiles, victims of oppression, grant them your salvation. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who are facing trials and difficulties, for those who are sick and those who are dying, show them your kindness and mercy. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for one another. May we always be united in service and love. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray to be forgiven our sins and set free from all hardship, distress, want, war, and injustice. Lord, hear and have mercy. May we discover new and just ways of sharing the goods of the earth, struggling against exploitation, greed, or lack of concern. May we all live by the abundance of your mercies and find joy together. Lord, hear and have mercy. May we be strengthened by our communion with all Christ's saints. Lord, 
hear and have mercy. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent into our hearts the spirit of your Son. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And together we will say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May Christ give you at this time his peace in your soul, his presence in your heart, his power in your life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And now let us go in peace.